Baby. Babies are little miracles. That's why I love to deliver them and help these miracles thrive in their new world. I am Dr. Justina Lorena Ford. Some called me the lady doctor, others the baby doctor. Colorado Experience is a co-production of Rocky Mountain PBS and History Colorado. History Colorado brings history to life for audiences of all ages. Through exhibits, collections, and historic preservation programs throughout the state, History Colorado connects people to the stories, places, and heritage of Colorado's past that provide perspectives on today and inspire our choices for tomorrow. Find out more at www.historycolorado.com. Org. Additional funding provided by El Pomar Foundation and the Betcher Foundation, celebrating 75 years of philanthropy in Colorado. With additional funding and support from these fine organizations and from viewers like you. Thank you. Babies. Babies are little miracles. That's why I love to deliver them and help these miracles thrive in their new world. I am Dr. Justina Lorena Ford. Some called me the lady doctor, others the baby doctor. There were many women who helped to shape the state of Colorado and in particular Colorado's ethnic community. One of those early giants of love, hope, and caring was Dr. Justina Ford. Dr. Ford was the first black female physician licensed to practice in the state of Colorado in 1902. Her general practice included pediatrics, obstetrics, and gynecology. She uh, was born in Knoxville, Illinois and uh, her family moved to the town of Galesburg, which was the county seat. Justina's mother was a midwife and so we just have to kind of sort of assume that that's where she got her love of the medical profession. Justina's parents, Melissa and Pryor Warren, were enslaved Africans in Kentucky and Tennessee. Melissa was born in 1831 and Pryor 1834. Melissa had escaped that brutal American institution of enslaving humans to the free state of Illinois in 1864, and Pryor, by all accounts, was freed after the Civil War. They met and married in Knox County, Illinois in 1869. We were slaves. We had no rights. Um, we couldn't own anything in particular. And so you just kind of shake your head and say, how can people treat people? like that. But obviously that's been a very big part of our history and our culture. But Dr. Ford, for whatever the reasons or however it happened, her parents were able to overcome all the, the bad and all of that. And she had a gift, obviously. She had a gift. And that more or less propelled her to become a doctor. Justina Warren was born January 22, 1871, just six years after the end of the war between the states. She was the only child born to Melissa and her second husband, Pryor. Her mother had three children by her first husband. Justina's siblings became her patients as she loved to play doctor, never nurse, growing up. Her dream was helped when her family moved to Galesburg. Her uh, high school was integrated. Uh, Galesburg was uh, a progressive town in that it was um, uh, part of the Underground Railway so that uh, freed slaves could uh, find refuge there earlier on and so many of them settled in the area. And uh, so she was allowed to actually attend public school in Galesburg and uh, learn about science and math and the things that she would need for a foundation if she was going to be able to go ahead and go to medical school. Author Wallace Yvonne Tolette also thinks that in addition to getting the foundation she needed in high school, Justina had something else. 
but there was something about her character, um, something about her innately that wanted to do more, to be more, to accomplish more. And I think that was what drove her, that was the motivating factor for her to be somebody and to do something unusual uh, that somebody else did not. And I don't think she had an attitude of I'm better than you or I can do this or whatever. I think it was just all part of her demeanor and her desire to make a positive contribution to society. For as long as I can remember, I wanted to be a doctor, a healer of the sick. I used to like to help dress a chicken for dinner so I could see what was on the inside. I watched my mother use her hands, heart, and ways of our African ancestors using roots and natural herbs to take care of her patients, and I wanted to do the same. My mother supported my dream, and after high school I enrolled in Herring Medical College in Chicago. I chose Herring because it was neither a black college nor women's college. The school accepted me because of my qualifications. My name is Renee Cousins King, and I'm a pediatrician. I went to Mayo Medical School in Rochester, Minnesota, and graduated a long time ago in 1981. Um, I did most of my residency training at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. One of the things that I take inspiration from in terms of Dr. Ford was her commitment to service and her commitment to the whole person. She didn't just look at uh, a disease or a patient. She looked at people in the context of their families. She attended a medical school that was homeopathic in nature and homeopathy was um, conceived of as a way to treat sick people by a German physician named Dr. Hahnemann about a century earlier. And homeopathy is based on the principle of like cures like and a rule of similars. I studied in the early 1890s at a time when I was supposed to be taking care of a home only. Women were um, very domestic. That was their thing to grow up and try to find a good husband and be a good wife. That was pretty much the goal back then. Before I headed to Chicago in medical school, my mother had another plan for me, Jessie, as I was known to everyone. Justina's mother, uh, Melissa Warren was her name, uh, was the founder, of, as you say, of the Baptist Church in, in uh, Galesburg, and a uh, uh, visiting pastor uh, came to town from Chicago named uh, Reverend John Ford. And he was considerably older than Justina, but uh, her mother introduced him to her, uh, possibly hoping for a match. Now, there's no way to document something like this, but it might have been in the back of her mind to allow her daughter to become involved with this young reverend so that possibly she could go to the big city of Chicago where there were more opportunities for her. And maybe, maybe someday she would be able to fulfill her dream as a doctor to become a doctor. The Reverend Ford and I respected each other and each other's career choices. John was the oldest of 15 children and his parents had been enslaved in Owensboro, Kentucky. However, John made his way to Chicago where his thirst for education was able to be fulfilled. He studied at Fisk University and he was the first college student to earn a degree from Chicago University Divinity School in 1894. We were a good fit. I was granted my medical license and my dream was coming true. Right after Justina Ford graduated from uh, medical school, she and her husband briefly moved to Alabama, where she was one of the first African-American female doctors, but they didn't stay long. She wanted uh, to go someplace that, where she felt comfortable establishing herself in her practice and uh, some place like Colorado, <laughs> where, which allowed people, immigrants of all different cultures and backgrounds, to come and to settle. 
Rev. John Ford had been called to pastor Zion Baptist Church in Denver. The Fords moved in 1921 to Curtis Street in the Five Points neighborhood. Her grandnephew Jack Bradley called the neighborhood the United Nations neighborhood. There were blacks, Jews, Latins, Greeks, Italians, Chinese, Japanese, and Anglos. I thought it all through before I came. This is just the place I want to practice. I told folks I came to Denver just in time to build Pike's Peak, and it was almost true. Justina may have felt in her heart that Denver was the place for her to practice, to lay down her roots, but it would not be easy. She would have two strikes against her. One was being a woman and the other being black. However, her can-do spirit would prevail. Little did she know that spirit would continue to inspire future generations. Dr. Justina Ford to us, to African Americans here in Colorado was as big or as important as Martin Luther King, as Rosa Parks, as Jackie Robinson in terms of breaking down barriers and overcoming incredible hardship uh, to get what she wanted, to do what she wanted which was to serve and to be an inspiration uh, to generations of Coloradans. And for us to follow in her footsteps uh, is easy because she really broke down barriers that at that time were unheard of facing overt racism, which a lot of times we don't see today, um, but having people tell her, no, you can't do this because you're black, uh, is, is unthinkable uh, today. However, uh, having her uh, do what she did in the manner and grace in which she did it is really uh, a great story for all of us and role model for all of us to follow. When Justina applied for and received her medical license to practice in Colorado, the licensing examiner had some interesting words for Dr. Ford. The city offices which, uh, where medical licenses were uh, uh, processed, I guess you'd say, and uh, the clerk said, ma'am, uh, the license costs $5 and uh, I feel bad taking money from you because you have two strikes against you. First of all, you're a woman, and second of all, you're black. I told that clerk I have my five dollars, and I have my medical degree and my license from the state of Illinois, and there are people here who need my care. In 1902, Justina Lorena Ford began her double life, physician to the growing area of East Denver, and as the First Lady of Zion Baptist Church. Well, I would think that uh, it would be very difficult for her to uh, hold the positions of being both of being the first lady of Zion Baptist Church and being a physician because the duties and the responsibilities of both would be so vast. The medical community of Colorado would not give me hospital privileges, so I practiced out of my home or saw patients in their homes. I saw what was needed the most. It was a family doctor that could take care of a family from birth to adulthood and beyond. My life became my babies. Marilyn Norman, and I am a Justina Ford baby. Annette Reese Groves, I am a Dr. Justina Ford baby. Well, our family consisted of six uh, children, Four, we had four older brothers and my sister Marilyn and myself. And all six of us were delivered by Dr. Justina Ford. Well, I remember that after she graduated, she evidently had tried to uh, become a member of the Colorado Medical Society. And she also tried to get a position at Denver General Hospital and was refused both because she was a female and an African-American female. So that's when she decided to set up practice in her home uh, there on 23rd and Arapahoe. And the practice that she did not do in her home, of course, she went into the homes of others. Uh, my name is Robert Pigford. I'm uh, one of the Pigford family. There are eight children, and we are Dr. Ford's kids. In this particular photo from left to right, that's Jean, William, Joseph, Carl, Russell, and Robert. All but he, he's the only one that wasn't Dr. Ford's children. 
Okay, and these are my sisters, and these were both Dr. Ford's kids, uh, my sister Julia and my sister Josephine. I wish I could tell you that uh, I was there at the birth, but I, obviously I was. But uh, it was Dr. Ford and my mother, Lottie Pig Ford, in 1942 on 29th and Humboldt. But my first real uh, memories of Dr. Ford is that she used to come by the house whenever any of the kids were sick and she had a uh, maybe a black four-door Ford or something like that. I don't remember what that car was, but I remember her pulling up and she had a little black doctor's bag. She'd come in and give you something, a prescription, and tell your mother to give the boy some lemonade or something like that and then then leave. Oh yeah, we were rough housing, uh, my brother and I, and uh, uh, fell on a coffee table and almost cut my ear off. So end up having to go down to Dr. Ford's office and she sewed me back up at that time. Whether it was rough housing or delivering a baby, Dr. Ford served her community. Her practice was thriving. However, her marriage to Reverend Ford was ending and in 1915, they divorced. John had accepted a position in Jacksonville, Florida in 1907 and traveled abroad and elsewhere often. I still loved him, but my practice and heart are in Denver. Justina loved delivering and caring for children. However, she never had any of her own. That is, officially. The entire community was her child. Dr. Renee Cousins King recalls one of Justina's special children. She delivered over 7,000 babies. I don't believe she delivered my Aunt Amanda, who was one of my dad's older sisters. But Aunt Amanda had uh, a love for Dr. Ford, and Dr. Ford loved Aunt Amanda. Aunt Amanda spent a lot of time and tagged along with her. And actually, when um, Dr. Ford married Mr. Allen, and they went on their honeymoon, my Aunt Amanda threw such a fit. She had a tantrum and cried and cried. And finally, Dr. Ford said, OK, you can come with us. So the three of them went to the cabin up in the hills, and uh, uh, my Aunt Amanda got her way. She got to go on a trip. I was with, I went with her and her husband, um, Mr. Allen, uh, on their honeymoon to Hugo, Colorado. To Hugo, Colorado. He had just come out of the Army. With Mr. Allen's help at home, Dr. Ford's practice grew. Soon, members of her family moved to Colorado. Because Justina didn't drive, Mr. Allen drove Justina to see her clients. One day while driving Justina to an appointment, tragedy struck. My dear sister Emma, it has been four months since that fateful day. Alf's physical injuries as well as mine have nearly repaired themselves. I marvel at how the body heals much quicker than the mind. Alf is heartbroken and would give anything to take that day back. He didn't see the train car coming. It was a mistake that eventually cost you your life. We decided driving isn't worth the risk. We sold the car and put the proceeds in a bank account for Arnold, my dear nephew, to go to college. My heart is sick with longing to talk with you like we used to. The only thing that brings us joy these days is my work. The babies keep coming, filling this house with life as they enter into this world. I worry what the world will be like for them as they grow. There's still so much hatred. I have been denied membership into the local medical society. I don't understand why white men are so threatened by a colored woman. If only they could look past their elitist veiled eyes of prejudice. Shoot, who knows? Someday one of their wives may come knocking on my door wanting me to deliver their child. Until then, I will continue to fight. Not for me, but for all people. I hope the children I deliver unto this world live long enough to see opportunity. When all the fears, hate, and even some death is over, we will really be brothers as God intended us to be in this land. This I believe. For this, I will continue to work for the rest of my life. Rest in peace, dear sister. I miss you so. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. With all my love, Justina. Justina and Mr. Allen healed, and Dr. Ford continued to serve the community she loved. If she needed a ride, the community was there to help. Ottawa Harris remembers. But as I said, my mother and Dr. Ford were very good friends. 
And uh, whenever, I, I remember on many occasions, my mother would uh, bundle us up, put us in a blanket, the three of us, or each of us in a blanket, put us in the back seat, and drive down there to Dr. Ford's house, pick her up, and then she would take her on her rounds for that evening. And we did that any number of times. And I know that several people did that for her. You know, Dr. Ford, I never heard that she had a nurse or an assistant who worked with her. So she was uh, uh, pretty independent as far as taking care of patients. And um, there's nothing more rewarding than seeing a patient get better. And there's nothing more rewarding than uh, seeing a baby come to life in uh, the delivery room or in her case in a bedroom. The biggest thrills that I have had as a pediatrician have occurred when I attended a delivery and pediatricians usually don't attend a delivery unless there's a problem. But um, learning how to resuscitate a baby and then seeing the baby come to life and cry and take their first breath is an amazing feeling. My dear Emma, I kept making my rounds and I kept writing letters to the Denver and Colorado Medical Associations for membership. Denver and Colorado Medical Societies granted her membership in 1950, two years before she died. Granted membership or not, Dr. Ford served her community, her community of all people, for 50 years. Playwright Ken Grimes wrote the play, Ain't No Grave, about Justina. I got the opportunity to go to D Galesburg where Dr. Justina Ford was born. And she lived in a community where there were doctors and lawyers and uh, barbers and a lot of professionals in, in a town that felt like an all African American community. And I think that's where she got her, her pride and her can-do attitude, where every uh, barrier she seemed to see it as an opportunity. And so when she came to Denver, she brought that attitude with her that she could do anything that she wanted to do. Ain't no grave can hold. I really admire the way that she took time every day to meditate, to pray, to read, to replenish her own spiritual strength. And uh, I feel fortified knowing that she was able to do that and that I can do the same thing. Um, I think she was a remarkable woman and um, she has a lot to teach us even today. I often think about uh, the lives that she must have touched delivering so many babies and it's, it's just mind boggling in a way. It just, um, you know, to think how many lives she brought into this world and how many lives she touched. The memory that I remember the most about Dr. Ford is that um, when I was about seven or eight years old, uh, I had contracted some uh, uh, food poisoning, and my mother said, well, we're going to go to the doctor. And I said, well, basically, I was wondering why Dr. Ford wouldn't come here. Um, so we, and she said, well, we're not going to go be, we're not going to go to Dr. Ford. We're going to go to Dr. Quick. And I said, well, who's Dr. Quick? And she said, well, you know, Dr. Ford died. And I was thinking at the time, uh, that had to be 51, 52. Uh, I was thinking at the time, well, it was kind of rare because I didn't know doctors could die. In 1951, the Cosmopolitan Club presented her with a humanitarian award. Dr. Justina Ford died in 1952, serving her community two weeks before she died. In 1975, the Ford Warren branch of the Denver Public Library was named in her honor. Her home was moved and became the home of the Black American West Museum. Ironically, she was named a Colorado medical pioneer by the Colorado Medical Society in 1989. An artist, Jess Du Bois, created a statue of Dr. Ford. If walls could talk, this is what they'll say. We felt more alive when Dr. Jessina Ford lived here. Lady Doctor, she was called by those who endured racism and hunger. 
Hatred fills the hearts of Colorado physicians' elites. Refuse to give her a license or grant her membership, too. The lady doctor knew exactly what to do. She went about her business fixing boo-hoos and scrapes. The baby is coming. Get ready for life. Lady doctor loved people of all kinds. Red, yellow, black, and white. She never gave up without a fight. A courageous, generous, gentle black woman once lived here. Justina's voice. When all the fears, hate, and even some death is over, we will really be brothers as God intended us to be in this land. This I believe. If walls could talk, this is what they'll say. I'm Justina Lorena Ford. Some call me the baby doctor, others the lady doctor. Colorado Experience is a co-production of Rocky Mountain PBS and History Colorado. History Colorado brings history to life for audiences of all ages. Through exhibits, collections, and historic preservation programs throughout the state, History Colorado connects people to the stories, places, and heritage of Colorado's past that provide perspectives on today and inspire our choices for tomorrow. Find out more at www.historycolorado.org. Additional funding provided by El Pomar Foundation and the Betcher Foundation, celebrating 75 years of philanthropy in Colorado. With additional funding and support from these fine organizations and from viewers like you, thank you. This episode is available on Blu-ray. Visit our website to order. There's more Colorado experience online at rmpbs.org slash Colorado Experience, Facebook and Twitter.